Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Ghost Folio on Run Tippy. So, a little bit about this series. I'm going over home labs, they're installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So, go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, Ghost Folio. It's open source wealth management software. It's built on Angular, Nest.js, Prism, NX, and TypeScript. Um, it has quite a few features, and this is why to use it. Trading stocks, ETFs, or cryptocurrencies on multiple platforms. Per pursuing a buy and hold strategy. Interested in getting insights of your portfolio composition. A value in privacy and data ownership in into a mentalism. Um, here's some features down here. Create, update, and delete transactions. Multi-account uh, management. Portfolio performance. Various charts. And this is what it looks like on mobile side. Um, so that's what we will be installing today on Run Tippy. So now I'm going to start on the Run Tippy App Store. I'm going to go over the search and type Ghost, and then now uh, Apps, and then Ghost Folio comes up right here. So now the metadata is what you see in the App Store. So the, uh, the description, and then the logo. And then the config.json down here uh, explains things for the App Store. So, so the name, the container port is 3333. And then available, exposable, the ID, the tippy version, and then the version, and then the categories, a description, short description, and the author source. And then now the form fields, so the ran a random access token salt. And then it's put in the environment variable down here of Ghost Folio Access Token Salt, and you'll see that in the Docker Compose. And then uh, same with the JSON Web Token Secret Key down here, and the database password and the Redis password. And then now the supported architectures that the Docker image supports are ARM64 and AMD64. And then now if we go over to the Docker Compose right here, um, so. A version 3.9 of Docker Compose file formats being used. I'm going to set some services, and then the first service underneath the services is called Ghost Folio. The container name is going to be called Ghost Folio. The image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no URL before this, and it's coming off uh, uh, it, it, that this is the Docker image, and then this is the Docker image tag. Um, restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart, but if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the ports, so, so the app port is going to be the proxy port. So it, it's going to proxy in the container with uh, traffic down here. Um, so the environment variables, so the, the node a, ANV is pro production, the, the host, the port is 3333. That's the container port. And then the access token salt and uh when we went over to the config.json over here, you'll see it puts in in the environment variable down here. So so that rhymes with this right here. So now the database URL, and then um, it's going to put the environment variable of the Ghost Folio DB password, and that was in the config.json as well. And then same with this one, JWT secret a key. The Ghost Folio JWT secret key is over here in the uh, config.json. And then now the Postgres DB user and password are here. And then the Redis. So, uh, so it's going to put it in the Tippy main network. And then the, uh, it depends on the Ghost Folio DB and the condition to be service healthy. And same with the Redis down here. And then now the labels for, for traffic. So main, web, web, web secure, and then the local domain, and then the local domain secure. So now we're in the next service underneath the services. So it's underneath the services right here, and it's right underneath the Ghost Folio service. So this Ghost Folio service is going to connect to the, da data the database right here, and, and it's going to store the data in this one. And then the cache, it's going to connect to the Redis right here, 
and then it's going to ca uh, cache uh, uh, th uh, things in here. So um, Redis is a key value store, and that means it's going to uh, store normally cache data or uh, things like that to uh, interact with the application. So now if we start down here in the Ghostfolio DB, so container name is Ghostfolio DB, and then the image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. It's Postgres is the Docker image, and then the Docker image tag is 15.4 Alpine. So that is a light image. And then a restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And env environment variables, the Postgres D DB and the Postgres user and the Postgres password and the P a PG data. The var lib Postgres QL data is a, cont a container path. So um, now this right here should rhyme with this down here because this service up here is connecting to the da uh, database right here. So now the health check and then um, the volumes. So on the host side is a dynamic app directory uh, environment a variable and then d a data, a, d a DB. So this is on the host side and then on the container side is varlib Postgres QL data. And then Networks is Tippy main network, and it's in the same network as this up here. So each one of these services are in the same network. And then now the Ghostfolio Redis, and that's underneath services as well. Container name is going to be called Ghostfolio Redis. The image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. Docker image, and then the Docker image tag, and it is all pine, so it's a lighter container. And then restart and let's stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the command. So we're going to put a uh, password on this Redis da database. And the Ghostfolio Redis password is gotten from the config.json over here. Right, right here. And then um, they, they, they health check. And it's using the Redis CLI ping. And then um, the volume and then a dynamic variable, and then the, the a data, a Redis, and this is uh, the, uh, the left side is on the host, and the right side is on the container, so that's data. And then it's put it, it's put it in the same network, to the Tippy main network down here. So that's a little bit about the Docker Compose and the other files in the Run Tippy App Store. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to go ahead and start on my Run Tippy, and I'm going to install um, Go Ghost Folio on it. So, I'm going to go over to App Store, and then I'm going to search for Ghost. And then now you see Ghost Folio right here. So I'm going to click it. And then um, you'll see all the base info that was in the config.json. Oh, well, some of it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and install. And then install. So now the uh, proxy port will be on 3333 as well. This could take a little bit to install. So now we got app Ghostfolio installed successfully. So we got it up and running. So now I'm going to go over the run tippy options on the UI. So if you go to the My Apps up here and you go to Ghostfolio, you can stop the cont uh, container and then you can open into the container, into the IP right here. You can go to settings and you can display on guest dashboard and you can expose the app and you can also update and reset the app. So, so you press update on when you check mark one of these. Um, so when you stop it, it'll say all your data is retained and you stop. And then it could take a little bit to stop it. And then now it's successfully stopped. So now you can start and remove the, uh, the app completely. And you still have the settings over here. So just start it back up and you'll be good to go.
So now I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, Ghostfolio UI. So I'm going to go to my apps, and then you can go into your app like this, and then you can go open, and then go to the IP right here. So now you get this uh, web page right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started up here, and then now create an account. And then now you have the security token right here, so I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to agree and continue. So, so now with that security token, you need to put it in a safe split, a place. So I'm going to go back over there to the uh, user icon up here, log out. And then now I'm going to sign in again. So now this is where you'll need your security token. And then you can stay signed in right here, check mark it, then sign in. So now we're back in. So make sure you keep that security token uh, somewhere safe. And then now you can set up accounts right here. So, so you have one account set up already, so you can go ahead and edit it, and then you can add a cash balance, and then um, set, save. So now we have one account in there, so we can add another account, like testing account, and then now we can add a cash balance in there. You can also change the currency and the notes, and the exclude from analysis right here. So I'm going to save. So now we have a my account, and we have a testing account. So we can go up here to transfer cash balance, and then you can go from the testing account to the my account, and then put a value in that you want to transfer, and then transfer, and then now you can see it did change. And um, so now you can go to overview, and then you can see right here your performance, and then you can go to holdings, and you can manage activity, and you can add an activity in here for the my account. And then um, you can save down here. Um, you can go into the activities right here, a lot like we were before, and then the allocations. So now you can see the allocations right here. And um, you can go into X-Ray. And then um, you can go over to accounts and be on the accounts again. You can go to the admin uh, a control up here and then you can see version, user count, and then activity count, exchange rates. You can add a currency in. Uh, you can turn off and on the user signup, and you can do that with the data, data gathering right here too, off and on. And then you can do some housekeeping like flush the cash. You can go ahead and go over to settings, and you can add a platform. And then you can add a tag in and then you can uh, see the market data and you can add one down here um, and then um, you can go to job queue and you can see users down here and then you can go over here and delete them if you have other users you can go to resources and you can see what things are about and then you can go to the about over here and you can go to change log and you can see what's happening with the changes in the software you can go over here to uh, settings up here and you can change the filters. You can go over here to your user and go to my ghost folio up here and you can turn on and or off the presenter view, the base currency, the language, the locale, and then that's for date and number format, appearance, and then Zen mode, and then biometric authentication, experimental features, ghost folio user ID right here, and you can also export the data. You can go over here to access and you can get give things access a private and public and restrict view and view and then the ghost folio a user id so that's a little bit about ghost folios ui so i just want to start to finish on getting ghost folio running on run tippy so if you like this tutorial subscribe comment like and support the channel and if you have any video suggestions or any community support you can go into the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.